Now, to create the metaphorical legs that will support the different floors, what we can do is use the extract tool, which can extract a NURBS surface uh, from or extract a curve from that NURBS surface, and we can use some other curve modification tools to maybe extend the curve further. We can join other curves together, and these are NURBS mathematical curves that can be used for fabrication and construction purposes also. But in this case, what we're going to do is use that as the center line for the columns, and what I can do is create a 2D cross section of the column itself. I'll make a few copies of that. And then I'll take that 2D cross section and I will sweep that along that center line path to give us the 3D columns. And these are parametric objects that we can always go back and modify later if we want to. Now to create the mullions for all of the glass, um, let's say there's 30 mullions spaced along the curtain wall there. Um, I don't have to click 30 times. What I can do is give it a preset number. For example, 30, I click once, and you can see it automatically derives all those for me. Next, let's add more detail to that second area that we created, the cylindrical element that defines the corner uh, of our project here. Now, at this point, this is a cylinder. So meaning we can modify the parametric parameters, which is the height and the radius value. So we can easily graphically modify those parameters. We can also edit that shape by typing in numeric information. So those same parameters that I changed graphically, I can also type in numbers. I can type in numbers for, for the position, the radius, the height. I, I can also change the personality of the object. At this point, it's a solid object, uh, but I can change the closure option to make it an open surface. So we can change the personality that way uh, by modifying the parameters of the cylinder, but it is still a cylinder shape. Now we can also convert objects into NURBS objects. So I'll take this existing object, I'll make it a NURBS object, and you can tell it how many controls you want on that object, and now we have a different type of personality. So it's the same shape, but now we have a different set of controls that can be used to further edit that so we get more of an asymmetrical editing of the object. So what I'll do is uh, simply play with that geometry and push and pull on those NURBS controls uh, to make modifications to that shape. We can grab all the controls that are in the center and um, have this column dance for you here and just sort of move that around and sculpt that into some very complex shapes. Now at this point, uh, let's put some windows into this. Uh, one way of doing that is to actually sketch right on the surface of the object. So I can use either the vector line or the spline drawing tools, and you can see that as I draw on that surface, the actual vector line or spline curve is being mathematically projected onto that surface. So it's almost like drawing on the surface of a balloon with a magic marker. And so we can create a variety of different uh, fun shapes here uh, and having that trim into the surface. Now to, let's undo a couple steps back and create some more practical type windows in here. We can actually lay out our profiles as a 2D plan view first. So here we have a series of 2D rectangles and we can actually pick those up and map those onto the object um, directly. So now we can create several windows by just creating the 2D information first and of course once we project those on we can still edit all the controls of the object and we can also edit this in the parameter space view which takes your 3D complex NURB surface and unfolds it flat into the top view and you can see that we can modify any of the trimming information that's on that surface in the top view. So we can modify not only the shape of the hole but also the location of where all the holes are put into that object. Now there's some other ways of making changes to the form besides just editing the NURBS control parameters. There's the deform tool, so we can grab hold of our geometry and bend it and bulge it and sculpt it and really play with that geometry for a variety of different types of 3D forms to really use FormZ as a design tool, as an integral part of that designing process. So we can do a bulge, we can twist it, we can bend it, we can uh, apply the deformation to the whole object, we can take the whole thing and bend it over, you know, or we can localize these deformations. So if I want to add just maybe a little bend towards the top of this area, what I can do is uh, reshape the deformation box and apply the radial bend just towards the top 
section, and you can see we put a little uh, slanted roof on top of that. Now, one thing you notice is that the window, since we punched those in first, then we started to deform it. We can see that we have some non-rectangular windows. Uh, so what we're going to do is undo a few steps back and go back to the original shape that we had because I want to apply the deformations first and then punch in the windows afterwards so we can actually maintain true, constructible, uh, viable 3D rectangular uh, openings into our object. So what we'll do is we'll go into the original object uh, and I'm going to turn on a series of lines here. You can see that uh, the lines that I have there represent the position of each of the windows. And then I'll go to the deformation tool, I'll bulge it, I'll twist it. I can also type in numbers uh, to be as numerically accurate as I want. I can shear the object off to the side exactly 16 feet over. So there we have basically the 3D form that we created earlier. Now all the lines were also deformed with it and those are still maintaining the proper position of where each of the windows are. So what I can do is take each of those lines and using the 3D enclosure tool I can give a wall width and take the line extend that to the width and height that I want and apply that to all those lines. So now I have a series of 3D blocks which represent the volume of each of the windows. And what I'm going to do is take all those blocks and join those together to make them as one single object. And then from there, I'll take the surface wall that we have there and to create that as more of a realistic wall, we'll use the parallel tool to give it a uniform solid thickness. So it's been converted from a surface into a solid object. Now at this point, what we're going to do is do a Boolean difference. So we can subtract all of those 3D rectangular volumes which represent each of the windows and we can subtract those all from our complex 3D solid object that we had which is representing the shape and now we have perfect rectangular windows that we can actually uh, then insert standard rectangular window frames into uh, that very complex uh, 3D form that we have there.